Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and here is a quick speed art video I filmed while creating a digital graffiti piece for one of my clients, so let's get into it. So I first started sketching out the piece manually and then I scanned it and uploaded it on Adobe Illustrator to trace over it. If you're more creative with sketching it digitally with a graphic tablet like Wacom, then you can just skip this step and use it to create the outline. Personally, I find myself more flexible simply on paper and pen rather than using my Wacom, but I actually use my Wacom in this piece to create the background elements like this splatter. So here you will find that I'm just outlining the basic shape of the word in one path using the pen tool and then I add the extra details later on. And now for the fill, I used my client's preferences for the color scheme. Then I added a thicker outline and shadows behind the text. Here I manipulated the stroke weight tool to adjust the width of the outline and the shadows behind. For every outline I add, I just make sure that I add it in different layers so that it's easier to keep adjusting it as I go. Here I added a few more drippings and I used the gradient tool to match its color with the text gradient. And now let's get into the fun part, adding some highlights. In a new layer, I started drawing out some highlights on certain areas to make them pop a bit. I first drew them roughly and then I zoomed in each and every one to adjust them. Here you can see that I'm not using a certain fixed stroke weight for all the highlights, I just keep them varied. Some parts might be a bit thicker and the others are a bit thin. Now on a new layer, I added some drop shadows between the letters to give them some sort of depth and volume. I'm not sure if this is the right word to describe it, but I, I like to describe it this way. I kind of like to make them slightly soft and faded instead of like sharp and thick. Now to make the letters pop even more, I added some extra solid highlights around the edges of the outline and specifically around the drippings to give a slimy feeling into it. I keep the highlights opacity slightly lower when drawn at the bottom of the letters and a higher opacity for the highlights at the top. Again, you can see that every time I create a new effect, I do it in a separate new layer and then I look up the other layers. In this way, it would be easier for me to come back to a single layer to just adjust a specific element. 
I still remember when I first started using Adobe Illustrator, I was a bit confused on how the layers work, that every time I needed to adjust, let's just say the highlights only, I'd have to select each path and then I would deselect the other elements. That was honestly time consuming and limited my flexibility in adding the certain additions to my works. Using layers is not only helpful in making selections, but also I'm choosing which element goes above or underneath the other. For instance, you wouldn't want your shadows to go above your highlights. And now coming to the last part of this piece is adding the background layer along with these splatters and effects. Here you will find that I drew a rectangle along the artboard dimensions and then I gave it a radial gradient to it, with colors matching that of the text. Then I added another outline with a light pink shade then gave it some glow effects. I drew out some sparkling stars, I already made a tutorial for it, you will find it at the ribbon above, so you can check it out. Now after I drew out the sparkling stars, I lowered their opacity a bit and definitely changed their shapes slightly, and then I placed them over the highlights of the letters. I just feel like this was an important element that gave or added more glow to the overall vibe of this piece. For the splatters, I used the symbol tool that has some splatter effect, but that was not enough, I just used it for, for the background and lowered its opacity. So I then used the circle tool and drew out some more splatters and I kept adjusting their size and manipulating their shape until I reached that final effect.
Alright, so that's it for today. If you guys find this helpful, please give a thumbs up and I'll really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.